Finally, what we're going to do is graph this function on the interval um, between zero and two thirds seconds. We're gonna label segments of positive and negative slope and in terms of the product problems context. Um, so just what the spring is doing um, in those time intervals. And then we're gonna rewrite the equation as a cosine function. So there's a lot to this one. The first part of it being um, graphing the function. So let's go ahead and do that. H of t is equal to 0.5 times sine of six pi times t. Okay, and then I also like to write my interval right next to that. So between zero and two thirds. So something similar um, we're gonna do here as we did in the last part, but we have this two thirds interval and we might wanna ask ourselves um, basically how many, how many cycles are in that, in that time frame. And because the period is equal to one third, I'm gonna change the thickness of that. Period is one third, then we know we have two cycles. All right, and then so something else that I like to do, um, typically what I'll do, and I'm just gonna say this, is um, I think about um, the general structure of the graph, so it would be a sine function, and where it equals zero, how many times it equals zero in our time interval. And then I'll divide the time interval by, so two thirds, I would divide that by how many times the function equals zero. Um, and then, so that's how I scale my x-axis. I'm gonna do that in a later part. But part B actually made this a little bit easier for us because we already know that the function alternates between being positive and negative on intervals of one sixth of a second. So between um, zero and one six, it is positive. Um, and then if we go over here between one six and one third, it is negative. Between one third and one half, it is positive. And then finally between one half and two thirds, it is negative. So we can use that information to help us scale this and graph it. Um, I'm gonna start by drawing I don't know why I broke it up like that, drawing. Start by drawing. <laughs> um, graph right here. This is a classic trig graph shape. And we're doing this in intervals of one sixth. So we have one sixth. We're gonna have one third. We're gonna have one half. Finally, two thirds. Okie doke. And then in addition to that, we should also label our amplitude. So we have an amplitude of 0.5 up here, and then we'll say negative 0.5 right here. So now our graph is all scaled out and really what we need to do at this point is just fill in the graph according to the intervals that we found in part B. So between zero and one six, our graph is stretched, which means it is positive. Didn't give myself a whole lot of room here, but so it's gonna go like this, right? Um, and then it's gonna go negative. So it's gonna compress, oops, my computer moved. Uh, back to stretch back to compress, and then back to equilibrium. So that is a really rough sketch, but we can even check ourselves and we can see that there definitely are um, two cycles in this. Okay, um, the next part of this question, we wanna label segments of positive and negative slope in terms of the problem's context. And I was kind of doing that when I was talking about what the spring was doing as I was drawing it. So here's a positive slope right here. 
So, so the segment from here to here, let's think about what the spring is doing. So it starts at equilibrium and then it becomes positive. So at this point, it's becoming more and more positive. So in that interval, the spring is moving down. So I'm just gonna say, moving down. And then let's talk about the next segment. So do yellow. Um, it's still in the positive quadrant. So the spring is still stretched, but now it's moving back toward equilibrium. So if we go back to our diagram, so the spring is like at this point, and now it's moving back up. So we can say back to equilibrium, but it's still technically stretched. All right, and then from this point to this point, I'm just gonna do this for one cycle because it repeats. Um, now we are compressed, we're in the negative quadrant um, and we're becoming more negative. So the sprain is at equilibrium and, and it's going up and compressing. So we can say compressing upwards. Finally, you can probably guess this, um, going from this like peak compression, um, it starts to come back down to equilibrium. So again, it's still compressed technically, um, but now it is moving back down to equilibrium right here. So for this one, we would say um, back down to equilibrium. And then for the yellow, I'll just clarify, we were moving up to equilibrium. And then the cycle starts over. Um, okay, and I thought we were done, but we're not. We have to rewrite the equation as a cosine function, but don't fret, it's an important skill to have. So, okay, basically what this means is that we wanna keep the function the same, we still want it to look like itself, but instead of having a sine right here, we want it to say cosine. And when you really think about it, I'm going to draw a line right here. So this is the halfway point between 0 and 1, 6. Um, the, the sine function is the exact same as a cosine function, except it is shifted toward the right. So if we took this graph and we shifted it left, it would look exactly like a cosine function. Sorry to hear in my mouth. So um, what we're gonna do at this point then is figure out what the peak is or at what time does the peak occur so that we can shift it. And the peak um, halfway between zero and one six is just gonna be one twelfth of a second. So we can rewrite this as h of t equals 0.5 cosine. Um, and then we have the 6 pi. But now, um, so if you think about it, right now it's just a regular cosine. But now we want to shift it right so that it looks like a sine. And shifting right is going to be negative. So we're going to do t minus one over 12. And that's it. Uh, pay attention to the fact that I have these parentheses here. You'll remember from that very first slide. I'm just going to go back to it quickly. Okay. Remember that when we have a phase shift, it's in parentheses and the wave number is out front. So make sure you do that because it's wrong if you don't. All right, and that covers the sprint example.